project was around refugee advocacy um, and trying to develop a more coordinated approach to the way that um, advocacy and service organisations um, work together, if that makes sense. Uh, so it kind of started when we realised that the federal election was coming up in about March next year um, and that there wasn't any kind of um, umbrella approach to organisations talking about refugee issues and that kind of thing. Um, so it's kind of been a really long convoluted journey this year, just starting to reach out to people that are working in the sector and also volunteers and refugees themselves. And so um, kind of where I'm at, at the moment is starting up a group called Campus Advocacy for Refugees. Um, so we're kind of working on um, providing some of the volunteer work for the professional service providers, so the lawyers and social workers, um, doing a lot of fundraising because all the funding's been cut. Um, but then also starting to look at uh, how are we telling stories about refugees and how are we providing spaces for refugees to tell their own stories. That the system is very much against them. Um, and that while that is the case, there's a lot that general people can do. Um, so refugees are in the community, or people from refugee backgrounds I should be saying. Um, so whether they've come 30 years ago or they've arrived in the last five years or 10 years, um, for the most part, I actually for all for all refugees, I think they are the most courageous and entrepreneurial, um, you know, people that that exist in this community. And I think we need to start recognizing that and talking about refugees. That's actually been a really huge thing for my project in particular. So I had originally wanted to be working directly with the organisations that were on the front lines. Um, but what we've found is that as funding's been cut and been cut and been cut the people that are working in those capacities just don't have any time or energy to th start thinking strategically about how they're advocating or you know <laughs> how they're trying to campaign for better um, for better systems. So while I had hoped to kind of um, develop a platform for organisations to come together and own own the change that they were going to be creating, I think um, it's almost a, a two pronged thing to kind of so the fundraising to help build their capacity again, but then hopefully through working with students it's kind of about building a legitimate voice for refugees and for students um, whereas I think at the moment we tend to when we have people talking about refugees in the public space it's professionals um, or it's lawyers or you know what I mean it's, it's kind of it's a very different voice to I think a lot of what happens in communities that really look those those grassroots kind of actions. I've been a really active volunteer from when I started uni and I think it's taken a lot of different shapes and forms. Um, so I think starting to work with other people that have been doing it for a, a longer time than you is a really great place because there's so much wisdom that people learn just through doing. Um, so that's been my last kind of three years and I've kind of got to the point now where I go, I feel like I have enough to support other people in that journey. Um, so I'm hoping that CAR is going to be a platform for advocates and for volunteers and for students to come together and say, what do we want things to look like in three years time and five years time and how are we going to get there? Um, so I think, yeah, for me, volunteering, and particularly in this, this project in this space, has been about what place do I have in the broader community and what impact can I have and how can I help other people have an impact as well. <laughs> <laughs>